what are spiritual gifts? There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot of incorrect assumptions and certainly a lot of incorrect operations by people who think or perceive that what they're doing is something from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's really easy to take an, an emotional response, a feeling, and charge that to the Holy Spirit. But a couple of things we need to remember before we even look at the text. Uh, going back to the Old Testament, remember the Bible says for us to be fruitful and multiply. We were created in the image and likeness of God. What does that mean? What, what do those two points have to do with anything? Well, because we are his image bearers, those of us who are of his line, sons of God, and we ought to carry that, carry out what God wants us to do, which is his glory all throughout the land. That's our job. Why? To build up his kingdom to magnify him. And so anything that doesn't do that, that is not in um, in keeping with what he wants. We've had people in the past who want to do their own things. Matter of fact, we've had folks that would stop and build their own cities and name the cities after their own self and build obelisks or tall towers to as a monument to themselves. We've got people that have already always wanted to kind of do things and magnify themselves. That's not our job. Our job is to magnify God. And so what does he do? He gives us the Holy Spirit to do just that. Remember in John 15, 26, he's telling the disciples that he's getting ready to leave. He's going to die and that he won't leave. That he's going to send the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit would do what in them? Testify of them. No, testify of Christ. And so he tells them in Acts 1, 8 that you will be my witnesses in not just Jerusalem and Judea, and not just Samaria, but all of the world. That is our job. That's the point of the Holy Spirit, to do just that. As a matter of fact, in 1 Peter 4, 10, he says, As each one has received a special gift, that is the Spirit, uh, something from the Spirit, where we have this word, uh, charisma in Greek, where we get the word gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So in other words, and we see this all throughout the scriptures, the Holy Spirit in us, However he's gifted us, however he moves in us, is for the benefit of others. We know this in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning. Now, our English says spiritual gifts, but the word that's used there is the word pneumatikon. The word pneumatikon is things of the spirit, the spiritual things. And so that should help us to understand what the point is that he's trying to get across to us. And we drop down to verse 7. He says that, but to each one is given, that is each believer, is given the manifestation or the revealing or the workings of the spirit. Why? For the common good. So reiterate what Peter said. Also what Paul has said in other places, the purpose of these spiritual gifts are for us to use, to employ it in working and serving others. Every time that we've seen it in the Bible, that's how it was done. We don't see examples of them using or employing the spiritual gifts for themselves is for others. Why? To build up the body. So that brings us to this point here in Acts 2, 38. And I want to read this text and I also want to consult a, a Greek textbook to also kind of help you understand what I'm trying to say. In Acts 2, 38, it says, Peter said, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what his point is, is that what you're going to receive is the gift that is that is the Holy Spirit. So in other words, the spiritual gift or the gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Now, what I want to do is I want to go and uh, go to Lagos briefly, and I want you to look up something that is in a in the in the textbook. It's the basics of biblical Greek. It's a just teaching you how to learn Greek. Now, this is from Mountains textbook, and we have these different cases. We have a nominative, genitive. We have dative and accusative. I won't get into the other, but the genitive is the case of possession. And I want to read to you how the genitive or how this possessive case is actually used. Uh, I'll skip a couple of these and just drop down to how it's also used. Sometimes you just use the word of. Well, there are different nuances that are important. And so look at number three here. He says, in a general sense, if you have a noun that in some way equals the meaning of another noun, so in other words, these words equal each other, the writer can put the noun in the genitive and it's said to be in opposition to the head noun. It is as if you drew an equal sign equal to the two words. The translation will often add a word or punctuation to help make this clear. And what's the example that he uses? He uses the example of Acts 2.38. It says, you will receive the gift, comma, the Holy Spirit, or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, what's the point? The point is, what is the spiritual gift that we're looking for? What is the gift of the Holy Spirit? That is the Holy Spirit. 
the goal that we want is the Holy Spirit in us working in us. Remember in Ezekiel 36, he says that I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That's what God is after. So the spiritual gift or the gift of the spirit is the Holy Spirit. If you are saved, you received that gift. And how does he move? What particular gifting? However he desires to, whatever he deems fit to benefit the building up of the body. The glorification of his name is what he's after. And so what is the gift of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit.